All right, to watch this video for March 28th, which is going to be Wednesday. And keep in mind, the market's closed Friday for Good Friday. So uh, there's two more trading days left this week. Uh, really, really whippy market. Crazy ranges. You're already right back down to the 200 day on the SPY. So you want to be careful out there. Um, real quick, I made a video because I got an email from a member that uh, said, "Hey, Mike, why did you mention before you, you know, before uh, before the end of the day that if Nvidia breaks below 220, you like it as a reversal long?" All right. Um, so I'm not going to go into it here because I made a whole video on it. So go to my YouTube channel and you can see the video. I, I thought it was much easier to post a video um, and explain it than it was, uh, you know, to email this person back. So. Uh, it went down to 219.85, and then proceeded to move up like six or seven bucks. So anyway, um, check that video out. Back to the spy. Um, ugly day today. I also talked in chat about a blunder that I made in pre-market, and I, I talked about it in pre-market. I said, "Hey guys, I'm starting the day down 500 bucks." You know, I constantly talk in these videos about I don't take a trade unless I can give you two or three reasons why I'm taking the trade, chart-based, right? And then in pre-market, I took 1,500 shares of like a $4 stock, thinking, you know, I'm going to nibble here. How much could I possibly get hurt? And I actually walked away from my screens for a bit and, you know, went and did my uh, morning routine and, and stuff and came back to the screens and I was down 500 bucks. Had to kill it. And by the way, it would have been much worse if I hadn't killed it, but... Um, you know, I told everybody in pre-market, hey, I'm starting the day down 500 bucks because I thought I was nibbling on a stock and that wasn't chart-based. It was because I read the news and I thought the news was good. So I thought, how much can I get hurt? 1,500 shares on a $4 stock or whatever. It was somewhere around four bucks. Come back to my screens, I'm down 500. So I kill it and the market's not even open yet. All right, I ended up the day green, by the way, but uh, the point being, and I showed everybody what I did, why I did it, and it wasn't chart based. And I talk about this all the time. There was there was uh, no reason to do that. So when you hear my videos and you hear me preaching about every call I make in the chat room, I can give you two or three reasons why I'm taking it right here, right now at this price, and it's all chart based. I can give you zero reasons, chart based why I took that trade in pre-market. So anyway, ended up with a green day, but there's a great lesson there. I told everybody, if you could if you could push a button and, or if you could check a box and say, would I want to start the day flat or would I want to start the day down 500, which would you choose? I mean, it's a stupid question. Everybody understands the answer, but it's a pretty good lesson as to you always need to follow your rules anyway. Um, I've had, I think I've had one or two red days in March. It's been a great month, even though the market's weak and I'm not a shorter, but I made a blunder today that I hope some people learn from. And again, I'm, I'm happy to be green. Uh, so the spy is pretty ugly and here's my watches for tomorrow. Why, why two big nasty days, the 200 days just below. I'd love to see this flush below hundred and hit the 200 day tomorrow you know, in the first hour or two, and then look for a reversal. So that's kind of what I'm thinking there. GERN was crazy strong. Now we've got two down days on declining volume. Just looking for a bounce, only with a proper intraday setup. Again, I'm in cash every night. Kind of the same thing with DSS. Big volume spike, two days lower on declining volume. Looking for a turn back up. AKER, let me go to fives and show you what it did intraday. It did this nasty flush. I mean, uh, go to twos. Let me go to two. This might be a better illustration. It's not even really. Wonder if ones will show you. Even on ones, it, it was a you know quick snapback. But um, anyway, long story short, you had a nasty reversal, a nasty volume, uh, um, nasty selling, I should say, a nasty volume. But then you had a reversal, and it's right back up. Let me switch to fives now. Held up pretty well after this kind of flush out. A lot of times. You see this and it's, you know, taking out stops. And I still like the chart. I still think this could rip through a buck one of these days. So anyway, it just goes on watch. I don't fall in love with anything. What was that tweet I did today? 
All right, pause the video just to find it. It says, my charts remind me of being sober in a bar at closing time. I'm trying to fall in love with something, but I just can't. That's kind of how today was. There wasn't a lot of uh, pretty charts. Um, but anyway, I zoomed in on TOPS here. It's the next one I'm watching. Very strong day, big volume. Took out the highs from a couple days ago. The recent highs, I should say. Which was uh, over 256. And ended up closing kind of right in that area. But you could argue, remember, that's a very weak spy. So uh, this is absolutely worth watching for a long. Um, TND. TNDM, let me pan out a little bit so you can get a better view. All right, so we got that breakout we were looking for today. Big volume. 200 days right there, though, which isn't surprising that it stopped there. But I think this might be worth watching uh, tomorrow for a continuation. RKDA, I was saying to watch for a bounce off the 520 today. Or the 520, the daily 20. And it actually happened. Closed slightly green. Um, I'm going to watch it for a potential long tomorrow. Since you kind of have a bottoming tail and it did uh, touch the 20 day, it might uh, it might continue to continue that bounce tomorrow. Um, RYAM, again, in a weak tape, very strong push today. Took out recent highs before pulling back a little bit on nice volume. Certainly worth watching for a continuation tomorrow. HEAR, nice volume today, relatively speaking. Only a million shares, um, but that's a lot for this stock. Certainly interesting, over 60 cents. Uh, we're going to watch it for a potential long setup, hopefully below that, and then we can use the break of 60 as another potential catalyst. Uh, please note the 200-day above. That's H-E-A-R-R-U-N. Very strong. Popped here. Nice uh, big breakout here and flagging after that, so I want to watch that one. And then R-H is a potential gapper. Closed at 75.31, and after hours it closed at 86.40. All right, so you know, somewhere up in this area right here. Uh, certainly worth watching for a potential uh, squeeze tomorrow, gap and go type play. We're going to add some gappers to this list in the pre-market. And um, real quick, check the description below where that arrow is pointing for uh, that lifetime membership special. The price, we, we first opened in 2004, and we're offering that lifetime price from 2004, which is unbelievable what we're doing in any way. Um, so check that out in the description of the video. And I'm going to leave it at that. We'll see everybody tomorrow.